There's a long tradition for this in Australian writing of shyness, of reticence, of storytelling itself as implicitly an admission of moral guilt uh, or culpability. We can trace it back to Henry Lawson and Joseph Furphy. Lawson's men are all uh, incredibly, almost pathologically, one would say, pathologically shy. And the reason is that they are living in a frontier situation in which the probability of committing wrong, of making mistakes, of letting, one, letting down one's fellows, indeed of having come to the frontier in the first place because one was in flight from some kind of sin of omission or betrayal, that the probability of all that is very high. When Lawson's characters or Furphy sit around the fire at night, they tell their stories, and their stories always uh, take as their point of departure some error, some wrongdoing, some act of betrayal. And it's the moment of admission or recognition the men fall silent, as if in the presence of a mystery, an awful mystery, that it's impossible for them to solve as individuals. Protestantism uh, is central, I think, to the drama of emotion and the expression of emotion in some of our best writers. I'm thinking particularly of Kenneth Slesser, of Les Murray, of uh, John Shaw Nielsen, and particularly of uh, Patrick White. Each of these writers was himself known for his own personal shyness, and in some cases, as with Murray uh, or, or Wright or Slesser, that, led, that shyness was actually uh, quite legendary. In each in the work of each, uh, you find the same uh, recognition and dramatization of distance. And in each, you see the overcoming of distance uh, through techniques similar to those employed in um, Bale's uh, storytelling, often uh, by encyclopedic means. I'd just like to uh, quote um, from uh, uh, an essay that uh, Kenneth Slesser wrote about the colonial Australian poet Charles Harper. Slesser thought that Harper was the first to capture this elusive quality of the Australian landscape in poetry with his image in the Creek of the Four Graves of the feathery swamp oaks fringing the banks of a creek, quote, the sylvan eyelash always of remote Australian waters. A beautiful image, the idea of the eyelash, the, the swamp oaks as the eyelash uh, around the body of water. Suddenly, Slesser comments in his essay, I perceived the flash and glitter of those Australian waters, as if a blazing slit of eye had half opened and half closed over an enormous distance. It is as if the landscape had suddenly winked at him. And it's not just the notion of winking, it's the familiarity, the recognition implicit in one person winking at another, the idea of intimacy between the landscape and the person in the landscape uh, that is most compelling here. And I think given that so many of us have our immigrant background, so many of us have a rather uh, attenuated uh, or difficult relationship uh, with the landscape, this idea of it as itself shy, and yet when it discloses, disclosing itself fully is extremely important in our culture.